it's 7.15. Mr. Carlson, it's 7.15 if you want to make that bus to the airport. You're welcome. The bus for the airport is now loading at the main entrance of the hotel. They got a special cargo plane waiting to pick up these fuel pumps. And I suppose if it doesn't get to Detroit in time, the production lines will close, huh? Well, that's exactly the case. Okay, don't worry. It's on its way. You have my reservation? Oh, thank you so much for calling. My daughter's going to have a baby, and I must be there. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I haven't got time. I suppose you'll have your second cup of that blonde stewardess. Oh, uh -huh, you're wrong. She's a brunette. Here, Jack. Take this over to Joe Capps at the city market. Tell him to say one for me. Okay, Mr. Purdy. Oh, hello, Joey. Hi, Mr. D. Uh, hi. Hi. Where are you going, Jimmy? Out to the airport. My brother's coming home. It's his birthday. Yeah? How long has he been away? Two whole years. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> I don't know why you don't allow yourself more time. What if you should miss the plane? Don't worry, I won't. What makes you so sure? Not with you driving, my dear. <laughs> There's the airport right over there. Already? You know, it seemed a lot further out than I got here before. It was. We thought we were putting it way out from town, but the town built up and spread out until all around it. You know, that seems to happen everywhere. You put an airport out in the middle of nowhere, and the first thing you know, it's right in the middle of everything. It seems to act like a magnet, especially for business and industry. About ten years ago, I could have bought land out here for $100 an acre. How'd you people happen to locate here? Well, the airport had as much as anything to do with it. That's so? We sell a lot of stuff to mail order houses. Nowadays, the buyers like to come around and see who they're doing business with. We figured we'd see more of them uh, if they could fly in and out on the same day. Very interesting.
What's the matter, driver? I don't know. It looks like a traffic tire of some kind. What is it, an accident? I don't know. There seems to be something blocking traffic at the gate. Close. What gives? What is this, a joke? What's going on here? I don't get it. I don't either. Let's go find a telephone. Skip. Mr. Withers, you might as well come out and show yourself, Mr. Withers. I know you're up to your old tricks again. I'm right here, Tommy. Mr. Withers, do you know what you've done this time? Of course. I closed the airport. But why? Please, tell me why. It annoyed me. Well, now look, Mr. Withers, you simply can't do a thing like this. Why can't I? It's built on my land, isn't it? Your land? I bought it from the government when I wasn't hardly more than the youngster. I paid a dollar and an acre for it. And I cleared it myself, too. Every last stump. That was years ago. Time, time. What's time got to do with it? It means you don't live here anymore. Who says I don't? Oh, come on, Mr. Withers. Let's face facts. You don't even live. My boy, I'll have you know, people like me never die. All right, but you can't close an airport like this and get away with it. Who says I can't? You ever hear what I did that first railroad that tried to come through here? The L and R? That's right, the L and R. I blocked them at every turn, in court and out. They never did get the right of way. So you were the one that stopped the L and R from coming to Middle City? Sure was. But that's nothing to what I did to the trucking industry. <laughs> I have those boys running around in circles. You mean you tried to stop the trucks too? Yeah, sure did. In fact, in the beginning, I tried to stop the whole automobile industry. I couldn't see any reason for all those cars running around, smelling up the countryside, scaring the horses. But some young fellow out in Detroit got the jump on me. He learned to build cars faster than I could keep up with him. I still don't understand why you want to close the airport. Well, let's say just because I dislike flying machines, my boy. Why? They're against nature. If God intended people to fly, they'd have been born with wings. Why, Mr. Withers, don't you believe in progress? Not when it makes noise enough to wake the dead. Oh. Uh, so that's what woke you up. Yeah, Sounds like the crack of doom. What you heard were jets. Jets? What are jets? Those planes, over there. Oh, those. If those planes are this country's first line of defense. First line of defense? What's become of the warships? Oh, we have those too, but things are moving so fast these days. Metal City Tower, this is Global 19. Global Flight 19, Middle City Tower, over. This is 
Global 19, we're in range. Request landing instructions. Go away. Did I hear right? I don't know. I'll call him again. Middle City Tower, this is a Global 19 in range, requesting landing instructions. Over. Go away. Land someplace else. This airport is closed. Mr. Withers. Closed? Well, well, well that's impossible. Yeah, but who closed it? Well, find out and let me know. Get me the manager of the airport. Hello? Oh, yes, Mayor Holly. Uh, closed? Oh, you're joking. No, no, of course I didn't close it. Yes, sir, I'll get right out there. We interrupt this program to bring you a special announcement. We have just learned that the Middle City Airport was mysteriously closed. No one seems to know why it was closed or who closed it. However, it has caused one of the biggest traffic tie-ups in the history of the city. Roads leading to the airport are blocked. I repeat, roads leading to the airport are blocked. Nobody seems to know any more about it than we do. I hear planes, but they can't land. This is fantastic. I never heard of anything so silly in all my life. What time does the London plane leave New York? In about three hours. And if you don't catch the plane, you lose the sale? Yeah. May even have to shut down our plant. <laughs> Let me through, please. Excuse me. Anybody here got a hacksaw? Yeah, I got one in my truck. Get it. Sure. <laughs> Look at him out there. Milling around like ants, trying to get into the ant hill. Mr. Withers, you don't know how serious this is. Oh, nonsense, man. Hey, you, get away from that lock. Get away, I tell you. It's charged. And keep away, you hear? Please, Mr. Withers, listen to me. Think what you're doing to people. Nobody's getting hurt, is he? Nobody's getting hurt, huh? Are you crazy? Look here. I want to show you something. What's that? That's a radar scope. We use it to track planes in flights. For your benefit, I'm going to have it do tricks. What's happening in Detroit? Jake, we gotta shut down the line. Why? Middle City Airport is closed. So what? We ran out of fuel pumps. We were flying in a special shipment from Middle City, and now nobody knows when it's gonna get here. Boys won't like it. Neither will the front office. Nobody's getting hurt? What about all those men on the assembly line who are gonna be laid off? Well, they probably need a vacation anyway. I understand that's very nerve-wracking work. Oh, Mr. Withers. Look here. This is Florida. Hello, Mr. Grant. Got your flower doll pack ready to ship. What? You want to counsel? What do you mean, your Air Force clothes? How else can I ship? But they're all cut and packed. What am I going to do with them? Yeah, you can say that again. What do you think he's going to do with them, Mr. Withers? Well, I worry about a few flowers. A few flowers? Do you realize thousands of dollars worth of flowers are flown in here every week? In my day, we used to go our own flowers. Uh-oh. 
Here come the police. What's going on here anyway? Well, I don't know. Somebody's locked the gate and we can't get in. Who locked it? I have no idea. Well, why don't you try cutting the padlock? Well, we've tried that, but the gate's charged. Charged? With electricity. Okay, then we'll break it down. What with? I'll call headquarters and have them send a bulldozer. Oh, no, you don't. Wait, Mr. Withers. The radio is out. What? There's something fishy about this whole thing. Mr. Withers, you don't know what you're doing. I, of course, I know what I'm doing. I'm engaged in the project of slowing things up a little. I'm sick and tired of seeing people rushing around like so many chickens with their heads cut off. But there are times when speed is necessary. Oh, nonsense, my boy. Half the people rush off somewhere only to turn around and rush right back again. There's absolutely no reason for it. No reason, huh? Look here, Mr. Withers. What about this boy who's just getting home from overseas? Daniel Deep? Daniel Deep? Right here. From Middle City? Yes, ma'am. I'm terribly sorry, Danny, but we'll have to ask you to report to the waiting depot until we can arrange for transportation for you. Transportation? But I'm supposed to fly home. I know, but this morning they closed the Middle City Airport, and we don't know when it will open again. Closed? That's what they tell us. What about my family? They were expecting me. This is my birthday. Now, don't worry, Danny. We'll see that you get home all right in a couple of days. A couple of days. A couple of days, Mr. Withers. All right. What's a couple of days? Well, have you any idea what a couple of days mean to that boy? Or his parents? Oh, fiddlesticks. They're waiting out there beyond the gate. In the car with the two children. Hey. That's John Dietz, isn't it? That's right. I knew his father. Oh, he was a fine man. I helped him get started. But then he got ambitious and he wouldn't listen to my advice, so he went bankrupt. Oh, has it ever occurred to you that John Dietz might not have gone bankrupt if you hadn't stopped so many new plants and new payrolls from coming to Middle City? What do you mean? Take a look at this. This is a company that wanted to locate here about 50 years ago. But you didn't want them. Too dirty, you said. They employ about 5,000 men now. And this is another company that wanted to come in here. You didn't want them either. You said you didn't want flying machines buzzing around over the city. Today, this company employs more than 8,000 men. Payrolls like that would have made quite a difference to Otto Dietz's business, wouldn't they? I was thinking of the best interests of the whole city. Are you sure, Mr. Withers? Of course I do. Well, I love this town. I was one of its founders. And you still think you're acting in its best interest when you have its airport closed? Yes, by George, I do. We were doing all right before we ever got the airport, weren't we? Mr. Withers, do you have any idea what air transportation can mean to a city today? Yes, it can be an awful nuisance. Yeah, let me show you something. Here's one of the busiest airports in the world. More people come here by air than by any other means of public transportation. people here owe their jobs to air transport than to any other industry. One out of every seven, to be exact. One out of every seven? Kind of bowls you over, doesn't it? Well, it's not like that in Middle City. Not yet, but it can be. Well, what's that? It's an ambulance. What goes on here, officer? Well, the gate's locked and the whole airport's shut down. Well, I've got a sick youngster in here that's got to fly to Philadelphia for an emergency operation. Oh, that must be the little Cartwright girl. Cartwright? The daughter of George Cartwright. Oh, good heaven, she's... She's my great-great-granddaughter. Uh-huh. 
I know. Yeah, that's her, all right. Why, well, she's a pale. There's something the matter with her heart. Her heart. That's why they're flying her to Philadelphia for an operation. Well, why do they sit there? What are they waiting for? For you, Mr. Withers. For me? I... Oh. You see, Mr. Withers? Flying affects everybody. Even you. Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. We're living in a new age. The air age. And we're all in it together. Whether we like it or not, we can't turn back the clock. Now, what do you say, Mr... Mr. Withers? Mr. Withers? At Mayor Holly. Someone must have ordered it closed. You want to know who did it? And why, if so, why? Now look, boys, we're just as much in the dark as you are. All we know is it was closed and it happened. We don't know how. Apparently, there are forces at work beyond our control. You mean supernatural? I can't say that. I won't say that. Middle City Tower, this is Global 19, over Bow and VFR. Request landing instructions. Global Flight 19, Middle City Tower. Clear to land, straight in, runway two. Report passing range station. Runway two. Roger, Global 19, out. Miracles never cease. He's gonna fly. Bye, Tommy. Goodbye. Now don't you get any ideas flying to the moon, or I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> 